commission will start up with roll call. Okay. All right. Claire Anderson? Here. Wally Wolf? Here. Jennifer Elliott? Here. Diane Landers? Here. Diana Felbush? Here. And absent is James Hedger. All right. Uh, let's move on to approving the minutes from the August 8th meeting. <coughs> submitted for review. This plat will adjust the lot lines of existing parcels and allow for the sale of lots in Red Bud Lake. The Planning Commission is to review the plat for adherence to regulations. So um, this is a um, new file number. Uh, owner is Red Bud Lake Association. Uh, the existing land use is res residential. Um, Dustin, do you have any, any words before we hear from Red Bud, Bud Lake Association? Um, no, this is actually kind of uh, cut and dry. They um, are replatting um, in the original plat they had um, what, what we have labeled as parcel one there was some of the park area and um, kind of uh, drainage area they had designated in the first one. They are looking to sell some of that and then you know, back uh, the, the west side they're removing some of these lines and creating a couple of new lots and the same with this over here. So other than that it's pretty cut and dry. They're not changing anybody's um, actual parcel that they own except for one individual, and his name is on the plat to be signed to the minutes. Um, him, him and his wife actually are on her, so to be signed. Other than that, it's all in the later it's currently that they're readjusting. Okay. Um, anybody here from Red Blood Lake Association that would like to speak? We all. I'm, I'm Rich Bennett. I'm the one that you gave the signatures on. Okay. That right? um, we will, when um, when they get the vellum to us, the actual one that we're going to sign, uh, they'll probably get that around to you at some point. Um, but we don't usually try to get that until after the planning commissions have uh, gone through, and that way we know what, we've, what we're looking at. So we don't need a signature from you tonight. We'll hunt you down later. So what does that become then? It's just a different block number, different block number, and put it as just an addendum to what I have now? Uh, yours will be an addendum, yeah. But, um, and I believe that your parcel lines are just shifting a little. So right. it'll actually be, your your land will just look a little different, so. And which one is he? Uh, he's going to be down, which which lot number are you currently? Uh, I'm going to eight right now, I'm six. Okay. Um, he's going to be down in this area here. He's going to be where? Oh, okay. On the left side. On the west side, back. Oh, you're back here. I'm sorry. That's right. You're six and you're going to be eight? Is that what you said? You see the biggest one there? The one that's uh -huh. 54? Right. Okay. I that's that's where I'm at now, and all it was is it's moved over ten foot. That's all we did is we shifted it to ten foot. From uh, from the old number, but I don't remember what the old number. Was. Six, I think it was. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Is there anybody else that would like to address the planning commission in regards to the Red Bud Lake? Replat. When does this become final, or when is it? Well, uh, depending on what happens with the planning commission today, um, it will go in front of the county commission. The it will be the eighth of May, or seventh of May. I'm sorry. And then um, once all the signatures are signed and everything and then filed with the registered deeds. It, it can be any time after the 7th, but all the signatures have to be on it and then it has to be accepted by the registered deeds office. There's no specific, now it's done until the registered deeds stamps it. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Um, 
other public comments or questions? Any discussion or questions from the board regarding the replat? Mm -hmm. okay. <coughs> well, we'll go through the uh, <coughs> conditional use criteria factors that we need to go through. We'll do that briefly here. Um, A, whether the change in classification will be consistent with the intent and purpose of these regulations. The criteria for planning has been established previously. Uh, B, the character and condition of the surrounding neighborhood and its effect on the proposed change. The proposed changes would allow for a few more homes to be built in the area. The proposed plat would allow for the sale of lots previously designated as park area and the Proceeds can go to repairs of the road and water structures on site. C, whether the proposed amendment is made necessary because of changed or changing conditions. Uh, the proposed changes to the plat are of no direct result of changing conditions. D, the current zoning and uses of nearby properties and the effect on existing nearby land uses upon such a change in classification. There would be no changes to the nearby properties or land uses. E, whether every use that would be permitted on the property as reclassified would be compatible with the uses permitted on other properties in the immediate vicinity. Redbud has its own zoning classification. This allows for such uses to be maintained in that area only. F, the suitability of the applicant's property for the uses to which it has been restricted. The uses permitted are permitted under the previously mentioned zoning classification. G, the length of time the subject property has remained vacant or undeveloped as zoned. This is not applicable. H, whether adequate sewer and water facilities and all other needed public services, including transportation, exist or can be provided to serve the uses that would be permitted on the property if, as if it were reclassified. Adequate sewer and water is provided by the City of Avenue. I, the general amount of vacant land that currently has the same zoning classification proposed for the subject property, particularly in the vicinity of the subject property and any special circumstances that make a substantial part of that vacant land available. This is not applicable. J, the recommendations of permanent or professional staff. It has been recommended to the Zoning Commission uh, that the staff, by the staff to approve the replat as presented. It allows for expansion and better to the overall conditions <coughs> of the red flag properties. K, whether the proposed amendment would be in conformance to and further enhance the implementation of the comprehensive plan. This is within conformance to our comprehensive plan. L, whether the relative gain to the public health, safety, and general wel welfare outweighs the hardship imposed upon the applicant by not upgrading the value of the property by such a reclassification. This is not applicable. M, such other factors that may be relevant from facts and evidence presented in the application. There were none. And staff recommendation is uh, recommends approval of the requested replat. Are there any other questions for Dustin or anyone else? Any other comments from the board? If not, I'll entertain a motion. I so move that we approve the replat of the Redbud Lake Association. Seconded. It's been moved and seconded that we approve the Redbud Lake Association replat. All in favor, raise your right hand. All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Thank you all for your Thank you. participation. All right, we will move on to the next agenda item. Uh, we'll go back up to the yearly reorganization of the Planning Commission. Dustin? Um, it's up to you guys to start deciding who's going to do what. Who's chairman, who's vice chair. Well, so, your secretary. Yes. Uh, and that, that keep, really, there's, so there's really just there's, two. There's two. I keep trying to talk to you guys when having someone else be secretary, but nobody listens. So <laughs> it's, just, it's just down to two. So, okay. this, so I, just, I have to be done now. Don't I? This is your second year. Jennifer second. and I are. Did you say Jennifer and I are both done, aren't we? Well, yours, um, you're done being vice chair. Say again? You're done being vice chair. Oh. You could be chair. But <laughs> I had to ask. You had to ask. But I thought you said the last thing. No, what I, what I said last time. All you know is you can't. I'm the yeah. only one. Only she, one she can't man. be chair. So, because you guys are. Um, I can move to vice chair. Can you I? can technically move to vice chair. <clears throat> okay. You guys, yeah. you guys can oh, switch okay. seats. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks a lot. Huh? Well, okay. I'm I'm gonna. I'm going to render my opinion, such as it is. I do think that we need to pass it around. I mean, of course, it's up to the board how they vote, but I'm just saying that. I think Diana would make a wonderful chair. Oh, I agree. Uh, did you people all talk? <laughs> I 
Actually, I sent out an email to everybody but me. But me, yeah, yeah. I told yeah. you I'd get back at you. Yeah, I know. Here, you can have your free water. <laughs> Well, I've if been there. If you're willing to do it, I mean, huh? I said I agree. If she's willing to do it. Yeah, I, I've been there, done that, got the T-shirt. So, you got a T-shirt? Uh, I didn't even get that. No, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> done yet. <laughs> uh, I would make a motion to uh, nominate uh, Diane Landers for chair. I would second it. It has been moved and seconded that Diane would be the chair. Do we vote on that, or do we have to just ask Diane if she accepts? <laughs> well. If she accepts, then you vote. Okay. No pressure. <laughs> okay, I'll accept. Oh, yeah. Apprehensively, but I'll do it. <laughs> okay. All in favor of Diane Landers becoming our chair, raise your right hand. Motion carries. Congratulations. Gee, thanks. I, <laughs> I won the lottery. Didn't I? <laughs> I've heard it pays real well. Now, who's the vice chair? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I think Jennifer should have moved down. I. I mean, that's fine with me, unless somebody else wants to. Does that sound okay to you guys? Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to do it. Do you want to? No, let's do Jennifer. Okay. Yeah. Can just okay. Okay, do you move over to Jennifer. So, we need, a, we need a nomination. We need a nomination. I nominate Jennifer Elliott to be vice chair. Second. second. <laughs> it's been moved and seconded that I, Jennifer Elliott, become the vice chair. All in favor, raise your right hand. Okay. And you did accept, right? Yes, I did. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's fine, technically. Diane's going to the calendar. No, no, I didn't. Yeah, kidding. wait until uh, we see if it's coming out. Yeah. <laughs> Think about it. That one looks like a tough meeting. Okay. It's a two year limit as the chair. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Every, every year. Oh. You oh, get to reappoint, but you can only do it twice. Yeah, this last year we didn't. No, year before, which was we good. Said, should be twenty four meetings. Yeah. Bite <laughs> oh, oh, oh. your <laughs> tongue. No, no. If you jinx me, I'm going to punch you down. This is when you talk about that kind of thing. <laughs> twenty four meetings. How long does that take? Some years that could be a long time. Yeah, I was going to say last year we had I think six meetings total, but they were like April, May. Yeah, yeah everything June, was big, big, big. Yeah. They were all early. Yeah. Um, the year before so, we had. But that equates. That equates to, she did kind of get off kind of light. Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Remember the year before and all of those meetings. Okay. Okay. I yeah, did not get off work. Oh, okay. oh, and I remember running a really big meeting where I wasn't even actually the chair. Remember? Oh, that's right. When yes. the one didn't show up. Yeah. Okay. Well, technically, I get some extra credit for that. Well, if, if you're if you're we're still dealing with extra credit, technically you took over for Gary. Yes. I did. So you really only did it one year. And that was a terrible. <laughs> no, 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 uh, regulation changes that have gotten in the, in the packet okay. um, that we need to go over. Okay. okay. We'll uh, we'll start with the the longest one there. Um, the this in the back of the packet, Article Twenty Three, um, is the ar um, article in our regulations that designates who can be on the board of zoning appeals. Can we turn the lights on? Oh yeah yeah yeah. I don't even need that on anymore. Um, yeah. <laughs> 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 there you go. Uh, Article 23 designates who serves as the Board of Zoning Appeals. Um, now, currently, the Board of Zoning Appeals is three members. Um, they haven't met since I took over. Um, I have a feeling with the way things are shifting, people moving out to the county more. Um, businesses popping up starting in the county. I have a feeling that we're probably going to see a couple here and there. But um, what I've done is I've rewritten the basically the first paragraph to read as it is in your packet um, that says the planning, the full board of the planning commission shall serve as the board of zoning appeals. Now, how this works, because a lot of, uh, I'll probably spend quite a bit of time explaining the how this is not a conflict well, that's what I was going to ask. Um, Why is this not a conflict? Because the Planning Commission decides on items of application. 
conditional use permits, um, the subdivisions, uh, business plans, stuff like that. The Board of Zoning Appeals meets any time I tell somebody no, they can't do something because it's against the regulations as they're written, and they disagree with me. Um, in my office, my no is never the final no. Um, if I tell somebody, you know, there's no way around this. Let's say somebody wants to put up a, a new building and they vehemently want to put it in this specific corner and it's too close to the property lines. And I say, okay, well, you've got to be 50 feet away. And there's no other way around it because in some places we allow for you can build as close as existing buildings. Some places we allow for, um, depending on the zoning, is, is the footage requirement. But let's say that this specific case, this individual wants to build that building 10 feet away from the property line, and their minimum is supposed to be 50. And I say, okay, I can't permit that. They would then file a petition to go in front of the Board of Zoning Appeals. That is not something that the Planning Commission would usually see. But the Board of Zoning Appeals looks at a situation where the administrator has said no, and the applicant disagrees. Or yes, and somebody else disagrees. Um, it's basically an appeal to my decision. So what the Planning Commission will see is usually never what the Board of Zoning Appeals will see. Now, there are going to be some cases where somebody has to ask for an exemption, and then that exemption would allow them to do a conditional use permit. Um, but what would happen would be you would hold a Board of Zoning Appeals meeting, start to finish, then you would close that meeting off, you would adjourn that meeting, and then open a Planning Commission meeting. They wouldn't be held at the same time, it would be two completely separate meetings, same day and time. But, um, you know, it would be like the Board of Zoning Appeals would meet tonight at 7, and the uh, Planning Commission would meet immediately following. And you said there's other counties that are doing Most this. Most other counties actually do this. And, and to be honest, the originally when they wrote the regulations in 2009, it was set up to do this. That's right. Why did they change it? That's right. Um, I'm not sure. Okay. Um, but it was changed, and when I, when I went back to start looking at stuff, um, I don't see where or why. Okay. But it was, it was shifted, and so I thought that it would just be a lot better to go back to this, because then we all know who's on it. Yeah. We all know... Well, I mean, I've been on the Planning Commission for quite a few years now, and I've not heard of any of the zoning appeals for um, the last The last one was in December of 2011. I know that because it was the first meeting I ever attended, and it was for a garage that was out by on Fair Road, just okay. to the north of I-70, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Okay. Uh, so they, they built, they had built it, and then came in for the permit, oh. and they had built it too close. It turned out that it was okay because the neighbors were fine with it to block their pool, you know, all kinds of stuff. But long story short, it took us basically we had to call people to make sure that we were going to meet because there are only three members. If, and if they don't meet very often. If they don't meet very often, and if you can't get a hold of two of them, you, you can't have the meeting. Mm -hmm. So with the board of seven, that also reduces down to where, like today, we're missing a sixth or the seventh member because we don't have one yet. And then James is gone. Even okay. if one of you was gone, we could still hold the meeting because there's still quorum. There's still at least four. Well, mm -hmm. the, I think the positive I see about it is, you know, the board of zoning appeals only meets when there's a problem, you may have a problem with one of your decisions. Um, I don't think that's really often enough to be familiar with the zoning that's regulations. That's the other side. Because they all follow the same regulation. They yeah. are, they're supposed to look at the same regulation mm -hmm. to make those decisions, and they don't do it often enough. So, I mean, you guys barely meet often enough to be able to, you know, mm -hmm. to, to roll through them. So, yeah. um, that who was are, kind of my, my call. No, who, who are the three? Uh, are currently, Claire Anderson. Mark picking, mm -hmm. and we don't know who the third person is. It used <laughs> really? To be, Eloise Marshall used to be on that. Yeah, and um, the last one I heard was somebody that the county commission affirmed two, three years ago, and there's no record of it. Or yeah. And How do you not have a record? Of well, that? they they have a record of the affirmation, but I never have a record of that person ever serving. Mm. Oh. So, and since there haven't been any meetings and the terms are two years, well, technically, technically we don't have, we don't have one right now. But that was on purpose because we were, we were restructuring. 
so if I recall in 2009 when you were talking about and why you never, somebody, exactly, somebody wanted it that way, but I remember when we were doing that, Doug Thompson sat there and he says, I don't know why we're doing another board. He said, it's hard enough to get people to sit on one, and now you got two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that he made that comment. With, that night, yeah. with, without sounding too, uh, too negative, I, I believe the decision was made arbitrarily, and I believe it wasn't necessarily made with the board approval. I, I would agree. So, because... Um, I, like I said, I couldn't find anywhere it was shifted, and then all of a sudden it was in the regulations approved. So there was no record of the change in the minutes, and that's kind of a big change. It is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The question, I would have a question on this yeah. proposed changes now. Are we going to vote on these at some point? Uh, yeah, we can actually. I put these in the public. I put these out on the paper. You guys can vote on this tonight. Okay, good. Well, this is the one. Now, what's the second one? You said there was a couple. Um, there, the other ones I need to talk to you guys about, um, okay. but I, I put one of them in the paper. Um, but I don't have any. I don't have any written changes because I want to talk to you guys about the changes that we could make. Okay. Um, and so should what we I go ahead and vote on this yeah, one? Yeah, these, these are two separate and then issues. Move on. Okay. Okay. So I, I have just one question. Yeah. The uh, Board of Zoning Appeals. It makes it sound like if it's something they don't like that we did, nope. then they can appeal it. But it's nope. only it's, something. It's only me you. because okay. There's yeah. the, there's a hierarchy for how these decisions are made. Um, Decisions come, um, administration decisions coming out of my office. If they don't like them, they go to the board of zoning appeals. If they don't like the board of zoning appeals decision, it goes to district court. Mm -hmm. Here in the planning commission, if they don't like the decision that the planning commission makes, which is a recommendation, it just goes in front of the the county uh, commissioners. commissioners. Okay. So that's why the two can be the same people but separate separate entities because those two never really cross paths right if it went to if it went to district court we would never see it as a planning commission right because yeah. at that point the yeah. district court says yay or nay boom it's done okay. so the only time that one would is like i said if they came in for instance um, but we also have a different we have a way to avoid that um, where for instance the uh, country by design thing they, they're requesting permission for a private road. Mm -hmm. They're naming it to our scheme, they're going to do it to our recommendations and stuff in their plat, but they're requesting it be a private road, which means that they maintain, they maintain a road. Okay. But our, rec our, our regulations say that there can't be private roads except by exception from the county commission. So they can go in and ask permission from the county commission to have this road. That's why you, uh, in, the last, in the last one um, on my admin report, um, one of the conditions I had down was that uh, based on approval for their road from the county commission, because even if even if it goes through all the way through and the county commission at the end decides to go, you know, we like the plat, but we're not going to give you permission to have a, pr a public or a private road, then they're going to have to come back and show how that road's going to be public. So, you know, it's contingent on there. So we even have a few ways that where the two won't meet. So we, we tried, well, I tried to go through and make sure that I wasn't ever going to have to cross hairs so that there wouldn't be any impropriety. Technically, I'm the focal point for the impropriety on this. So. Okay. Well, I, I think it's a good idea. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, we're meeting anyways, and we're all, you know, at least halfway familiar versus a board every couple of years. Mm -hmm. I think we'd probably be better qualified. So, would you entertain a motion to approve the change? Well, I, am I still, or did I hand chair over to you? No, 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 no. We haven't been sworn. Oh, yeah, well, we haven't been sworn. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. You don't get to hand me sworn. I got to run the next meeting until you take over, right? Okay, all right. Well, I will entertain a motion. Or is there any more discussion or questions about? And please, feel free to ask questions. About I think that, this, in my opinion, that's this is an easy one, and I would make a motion that we approve. Article 23-102, with the changes as published for the powers and duties that the, the, the people that sit on the full board of the Planning Commission are also the Board of Zoning Appeals. Seconded. Okay, it's been moved and seconded that we approve the changes to Article 23 in regards to organization, procedure, and powers and duties. All, uh, if you approve, everybody raise your right hand. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. It has been approved, the changes to Article 23. Okay. So is this going to be served on 2 now?
Yes, you guys are. Yeah. Will they? Will we still have the same chair? Nope. It'll have spread? its own hierarchy when we meet oh. for the. What we'll have to do at some point is meet as the board of zoning appeals, and you guys will have to decide who's the chair and the chair and the vice chair for it. <laughs> you guys can designate that it's the same person, um, but then you also have to set up your terms, how long everybody serves on the board um, as as officers, not. You know, because if you're on the planning commission, you're also on the board of zoning appeals. You're kind of stuck. But <laughs> so um, you guys will have to go through an organization meeting for that, because it'll be a different set of bylaws and everything. But I'm going to have to write those. But I wasn't going to take the time to write them unless you guys went through with this. Okay. Because um, writing bylaws takes a while. Because you don't have enough to do. Yeah. So keep it simple. <laughs> yeah. All right. Next. Change. Okay. Change, Dustin. The next one that I'm going to talk about is um, Article 21, 105.51. Now, it's not like I said; it's not in your packets. What this is is it's part of the conditional use permitting, and it's about cell phone towers, telecommunication towers. Currently, we have a three-mile limit. Um, the towers can't be within three miles of another tower. Now we've made um, we made a couple of exceptions for that with the old microwave antennas, the really tall ones, but the cell phone towers could be you know close to those. Mm -hmm. But as you're all well aware, as you get farther out the county, the data and your phone usage drops dramatically. Mm -hmm. And I've had quite a few people coming in to talk about um, and requests from different cell phone companies about reducing that limit. And I see the viability of it in the future because eventually basically you know we're going to be dealing with higher power equipment but more people on it. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to talk about reducing it from three miles to a mile but putting a huge amount of restriction on that mile. Um, currently we request that they co-locate if they can. I would like to put a very strict regulation on that that says that they have to provide us in writing from the owner of the closest tower why they can't co-locate mm -hmm. and that financial obligation is not a good excuse. Because if they come into us and say, well, the rent's too high, that's not our problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what would be a good viable excuse? Well, they couldn't co-locate. Um, like, what if the tower's full? Okay. If, if their tower's okay. full, um, their equipment is too big, or our tower can't support the engineering. Gotcha. Um, you know, and I'll put the, I'll put some of those in writing. Okay. But I wanted to talk about that that one mile um, because eventually we're going to start getting companies coming in and talking about it. I've already kind of had a couple talking about, and when I mentioned the three mile rule, they backed off and haven't heard from them in a year or so. But I'm pretty sure they're going to start coming back. What are some of the other surrounding counties. What, what are um, they, what's Celine and Gary doing? Celine uh, allows for a mile, um, but they don't, they're not as strict on their co-location requirements, um, but Salina is much larger in, in span, so they they have them intermittently in Salina, um, and then you've got the little towns of Saria and Gypsum and that kind of thing. They're, they're close enough proximity that they're, and they're not nearly as hilly. So The other thing too is when you look at our county, there's a lot of there's a lot of interest in I-70. Let's let's take care of that because we so in so many we don't care about anybody that's not driving down I-70 in so many words. But we are a long county, so what's happening when I'm driving to the south way down here? Exactly, um, yeah. and actually that's where the interest has been is both on, on northern 15 and southern 15. Okay. Um, and last year we approved. No, two years ago we approved two towers south on 15, right. yeah. 1400, and down by um, Highway 4. Yeah. Well, one of the calls I got about a year ago was to put one in Elmo. Well, that's a good idea. By, a, by a different company, by Next Tech. Now, Next Tech is powered by TC Telco. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so, TC Telco, Next Tech, anywhere that TC Telco offers service, Next Tech is trying to also offer service. Which, you know, economically that's fantastic. It, it's a viable thing for the people around there. But at the same time, we've got to take into account the aesthetics of the area. When you're driving down 15, you can see, you can see the cell phone tower at Rural Center, and you can see the cell phone tower down by Highway 4 pretty much as soon as you get past 1700 Avenue. Mm -hmm. So, and then we get another one at Elmo, and you know. Um, so, and I have a feeling, 
because I got an email from a Next Tech person asking about uh, co-location requirements not too long ago that he's going to be calling me again soon. But I, I wanted to talk to you guys about seeing if we could do that. Um, now, I can, because I put it in the paper, we can talk about the verbiage and we can approve it tonight. Um, and I can just open it up and rewrite the way we're talking about it, and that way we can move forward with it. Um, we don't have to throw it around again. Um, but the main thing that I want to do is, is talk about the, the restrictions I'm putting on that. Because I'd like to keep with the three miles. Because if they're three miles away, we don't require them to co-locate. But I, what I want to do is say, um, up to a mile away, require, or at a minimum a mile away, requiring this. Mm -hmm. At three miles, you don't need to prove to us why you can't co-locate. But mm -hmm. if you're doing it a mile, between a mile and three miles, we need to know why you can't co-locate. Mm -hmm. And that's going to put them through, that alone will put them through enough of a loop that they're going to have to provide us a lot of information. Okay. Because then we know, and, and that's how we'll also know, that if those towers are full, then they're going to need more service anyways to, to serve the populace. If they're not full, then there's not the need for another tower. They're just going to have to shell out a little bit more money to be on someone else's tower. Mm -hmm. So, I, think that sounds like a good idea. Um, I figured that helps us, if we do it that way, that helps us gauge where we are and where we need the towers mm -hmm. um, and where things are getting heavier. Because if we notice that, we'll use the Elmo thing as, as an example, if we notice that the stuff south of Highway 4 is full, they've got all those towers full, and somebody else is looking to put another tower in, that's obviously a busy area for cell phone use. Why? Does that mean we need to look at making that area a little bit more of a development area? Do we need to focus on looking at that for, you know? So there's a lot of other implications we can do that'll snowball from this, and I think that we can get that if we can get that information from them as to why can't you co-locate. Or it might just be that from about three miles south of Real Center to almost Hillsboro, <laughs> there was just yeah no, nothing. and that's and that's another thing. And, <laughs> I mean, and just that's, cell phone. Um, and, yeah. and when you uh, uh, when you go because um, I made a lot of trips back and forth to Wichita this last week. Um, when you go down to um, just into the Marion County, about what three or four miles, there's another tower yes. yeah. that's by the same people that did the one at Highway yeah. Four. Yeah. So, and I know that they're continuing on towards Hillsboro, mm -hmm. um, but I know that now Next Tech, since they're working with TC Telco, and there's a Next, or there's a TC Telco Next Tech building here in town, right. mm -hmm. and that's you know that's because they partnered up and they're working on putting stuff out there. Um, so, if they did one at Elmo, it'd be about a mile and a half from the existing yeah, one. Yeah, about a mile and a half. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of where I'm like, you know, that's because that's the one that's stuck in my head. But I know that that may be a, a, a little hard to prove, but a mile is very accurate. Mm -hmm. So if you guys are interested in working on that this evening, I figure, because I've, I've kind of got something a little bit pre-written up, but it's not anything um, dead set. So, Well, I think tonight... If, if people are receptive to the concept mm -hmm. is maybe what we need to vote on and say, yeah, well, I'm just saying if we would approve it tonight, we're, we're, we're comfortable with the concept now. You come up with all the restrictions. Mm -hmm. And then we'll look at the service. Yeah, I don't think we have to have this up there and type it tonight. I no. Think, okay. You know, we can, yeah. well, we don't then, have to take an official vote since we're that's only, making an official change. That's, that's only my suggestion. I'm, I'm I agree. Yeah. I agree. I'd rather see it in writing and have you yes. be able to, yeah. okay. instead of, I mean, unless you've, you know, have we a draft already. Uh, the, the, only, the only thing I have um, in, is up here. Um, that's well, actually drafted out. Let's give you time but, to, to work on it. Because I, I also need to send it to Doug yeah. to see what the oh, yeah, yeah, then let's do it this yeah. mm -hmm. There's also going to be proprietary business stuff that, you know, because let's say Altel says, or Altel, wow, um, they're not <laughs> in existence anymore. Uh, let's say AT&T has a tower, and Verizon wants to build another tower within a mile of them. Well, we're going to need to know why Verizon can't be on AT&T's tower. Mm -hmm. AT&T may just come back and go, because we don't want them to. Is that a legal excuse? Well, it's their tower, so technically, yes. Mm -hmm. But does that is that for us? You know, is that, well, you know? Probably, because we grandfathered. 
Now, they even need so, to put that in writing to tell the company that's wanting to co-locate on the tower. Right. In writing that, no, we're not yes, going to want you on there. Exactly. Yeah. And we need something from them, yeah. the applicant, mm -hmm. and not us, not, not me doing the groundwork <laughs> as to why. Right. Yeah. The applicant will have to come in with the stuff in writing that says, why can't you co-locate? Right. And specifically, I want to see how I can word that rent isn't the question. Because how hard would it be for them to go, hey, would you guys charge us like $3,000 a month rent on this tower? Yeah. Sure. Well, that's too expensive. Could you write out that you're going to charge us $3,000, you know, so I can sure. get another tower mm -hmm. put up? Yeah. I, finances shouldn't be the question. Because if, mm -hmm. in, my, in my head, if the requirement and the need is there, cost isn't the issue. Yeah. Right. So can you add in that, that if somebody is going to put a new tower up, they are required to allow other people to be on their tower? We actually already do that. Okay. That's the thing. And that new tower down there by Elmo is already on there that they have to allow for, I think we said, um, we have 48, 48 spots yeah. that they have to be able to co-locate on and that they have to allow others to co-locate on. So we've already got that in place. Yeah. So them saying no for the two towers we approved won't cut it. That's right. For the ones before that, they're grandfathered. But the ones before, but the ones that we've approved so far, they can't just say no. They have to have an engineering reason. Okay. That it won't support the that equipment. it won't support or the equipment, or that, and and there's also the legitimacy of you know, well, it's an AT and T tower and it's AT and T internet service, and our 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 information is proprietary, mm -hmm. so we can't allow them on our network. Okay, but that's an excuse we can put into the paperwork that says you know they had a valid reason for. But I need to kind of cut down what those valid reasons I are. I think, unless anybody has a problem with that, I think we'll just yeah. move it back in your uh, report to bring us yeah. an actual, you know, okay. get with Doug, get it all set, and then we can approve it. Okay. But I think, I think that's the best way yeah, to do it. I think it. tonight you're saying, I ain't going to go to, through all the work, and then you guys say, no. we're not interested. We're right. telling you right. tonight, yeah. Yeah. We're, we're interested, interested. To put it together. Okay. And then I'll, what I'll do is I'll yeah. have it for the next meeting. Sure. Perfect. So, okay. and so what uh, what you guys will need to do, if you don't mind, is you'll need to table that because it's in it was in the paper as we were going to hear it. Okay. Um, is that now? Is that twenty one what? Twenty one. Twenty one. One oh five. One oh five. Yeah. Twenty five. One oh. Let me get the number. Twenty Article twenty one. One oh five fifty one. Right? Yeah. There you go. Okay. Okay. So I will entertain a motion to table this. Oh. I move that we table the article twenty one. Article 21. Okay. 105.51. So, thank you. Until <laughs> when? Uh, until either our next meeting or if I'm destined has time to get things written up. Okay. Seconded. Okay. It's been moved and seconded that we table the proposed changes to Article 21.105-51 until our next meeting. Uh, all, of, all approved. Raise your hand. All opposed? Motion passes. We have tabled the uh, Article 21 changes until next meeting. And speaking of next meeting, um, there are two conditional use permits. Um, they are both fairly simple, straightforward. Um, they are both for um, sporting complexes. Mm, good. Um, an archery range on the east side, uh, or yeah, east side of Enterprise. Um, an outdoor archery range, mm -hmm. and then an archery slash gun shop um, just on Highway 4 north of Harrington. And the gentleman also is looking at doing an air powered, like rifle range inside, like BB guns, that mm -hmm. kind of thing, um, but also an indoor archery range. Good. So um, that one will have a couple of interesting things because right now his only access is through a railroad right away. Oh no. Um, and it's been that way for decades, but it's public access through a railroad right of way. And the way they worded it is really interesting. So I'm kind of looking into it, but it looks like it's it's valid for them to, to use as, as their own entrance um, because the way that a lot of them worded it a lot of times is um, for use of the property owner, which whatever use that becomes, they're okay with. Otherwise, is, is the railroad still in use? No, 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 no. It's okay. the railroad um, has been abandoned for. Is that the Old Rock Island line coming in from yes. the north? Yeah, it's been abandoned for several years. Yeah, okay. um, and uh, 
the, uh, the other side of that is if they can't use that one for some reason, um, they're going to have to get an entrance off of Highway 4. We all know how working with Kata is to get an entrance. Yeah, and that's like a fifteen twenty thousand dollar expense just mm -hmm. to get the entrance. So they're they're doing the legwork to find out if they can legally use that driveway. <laughs> yeah, good. Uh, but okay. other than that, so that's what we have next month. Um, same same bat time, same bat channel as what, normal. What's well, the date of our next meeting? Uh, it would be May twelfth, seven p.m. Okay. We're back, back. We're back to the to the second Tuesday. Yes. Okay. okay. The only reason I was going, or I, we had to move it, was uh, last week I was in uh, Newton for um, economic development stuff. So, so we're back to those, and, and I've already sent out public notice. Everything's in the paper already. I've seen, I've so, seen month in last night's paper. Yeah. I've seen that. So it's all out there. And I got all that done while I was in Newton, so that we can get it out there. But, um, and I anticipate. Um, I heard back from the uh, the developer for the Country by Design um, a couple weeks ago. Um, they're working on a letter right now for the township, like we requested them to do, to get permission from the township to do their road and an agreement with the township for how they're going to design the road, the, the township's road. And it sounds like they've come to an agreement and they're working on getting it on paper. Mm -hmm. So, and I told them that we wouldn't entertain anything until we got that in writing to show that both the township and the developer come to an agreement on what was going to happen to that road. Because that handles the drainage problems that a lot of people had, that handles the township's issue of, well, who's responsible for the road. So I, I think that, you know, in the, um, and we did visit um, with the uh, with law enforcement about the issue of the trucks. And I'll have more of a report on it then, but basically it's you know, unless unless they're um, out there sitting there all the time, the roads are designed for people going 55 miles an hour with the anticipation of a properly loaded vehicle. So they can't take into account overloaded vehicles and speeding, which means the rules are actually the way they're supposed to be, even though we all know that the rock trucks are overloaded and drive extremely fast. Mm -hmm. Legally, if they were doing what they were supposed to, the road would be safe if somebody was coming over the hill. So we have to look at it from that angle. Mm -hmm. So. Any other new or old business? I don't have anything in front of me. I'll probably remember something tomorrow morning. But okay. as of right now, no. <laughs> All right. I have a motion to adjourn. Second. It's been moved and seconded that we adjourn. All in favor? Piper Stephanie. I like those kind of votes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, know, you guys. I wasn't here for that meeting, but uh, 